Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Classic Live Album War. Look who's back. Hey, everybody. How's it going? My Pete, good friend, always. Chris Allo is here. Always a pleasure. All, all you guys that watch your show, they're, they're awesome. So you got a lot of fans on here. Uh, it's, it, it's very humbling. <laughs> everybody is awesome. <laughs> Uh, thanks to everybody for for being so cool. And, so he's back. So you know, I have I have two very special guests that are going to help me finish off round one of this classic live album tournament. He's one of them. The other is Jeff Young. Jeff is in Dayton, Ohio, right now recording the Fleshy album. So he's been busy as anything. But I'm hoping to get him and his uh, new lead singer Hell's Bells pinned down tomorrow, so we can re we can record the last four or five of these episodes. But Chris is going to Chris is doing four with me today. Some really good ones, and we've got a. a Killer battle today. Yeah, and, yeah. This, right? this, I mean, this is, is this, this is, is a, a tough one. one. This is a heavyweight yeah. battle for the ages here. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about two amazing live albums by two amazing influential bands that everybody loves. Well, I hope everybody loves. If you don't, then then you're you're on the wrong channel. Yeah, exactly. So we've got Past Lives by the Mighty Black Sabbath. Okay, and we're going to talk about the history of these a little bit, and then uh, Led Zeppelin's How the West Was Won. A triple album or triple disc? Was it a triple album at, when they released? Uh, the uh, the or Zeppelin, was it four? yeah. Or was it no, four? no, yeah, it's, it's, it's triple a, LP. definitely triple. And this a double CD, but originally, originally it came out in 1980. Yep. As the album uh, Live at Last, this was a shady record company deal. Uh, I believe it was Nems Records. I yes. think that put this out in 1980 to uh, combat the or to to just tie in to the Heaven and Hell. Uh, album yes and um it's um and there, there was no official black sabbath live album at the time yes correct and now they had Hence a new the name, lineup li yeah, live at last. last so finally but the band like hated this yes correct hated absolutely this. it was it was disavowed but then fast forward to 2002 and it and you know they're doing all these black sabbath remasters and all that kind of stuff and then this thing comes out all right which is basically that and with, a lot of other with a whole other disc of amazing bonus material, right? And I was I was telling Pete uh, when I, I was trying to go go back and, and listen to uh, everything again. Um, I went I went and I found this. Oh, I can't see it. That's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I went and found this in my uh, collection, and it's it's a still sealed digipack of past lives. And I'm like, wait a second. I, I've heard this album a ton of times. How how is that possible? And I kept kept digging through my Black Sabbath section, and apparently I bought it twice because here's my uh, opened Digipack version, and um, the Digipack has it just folds out a bunch of times. There's some nice pictures, but yeah, the, the big gimmick is there's a, uh, of course, not really used guitar pick um, from Tony, yeah, from from, from Tony Iommi, but. Um, so he's got the digipack. I've got the rig, the CD. Jewel yeah, same, same track listing. Same track listing. So why don't we talk about that track listing a little bit here? Why don't we? So we've got uh, on disc one. We've got tracks one through five recorded at the Hard Rock in Manchester, England, March 11, 1973. And then the second half of the disc is uh, six through nine recorded at the Rainbow Theater in London, England, uh, March 16th of 73. And I'm trying to remember where where was this one? So this was uh, the Manchester and right, the Rainbow. Correct. Okay, yep. so basically, live at last. So this so live at last is basically disc one. Okay, and, of, of and disc life. one or, or live at last as it was originally. There's definitely um, some omissions of classic Sabbath material, but if you look at the the uh, the whole, they really on disc two, but they pulled in you know the omissions and gave you a classic, and also gave you some like amazing gems. Yeah, you know, hole in the sky, symptom of the universe, live versions of megalomania, hand of doom, um, hand of doom, which is an early version has different lyrics. And on the end, I, I, I don't know why, it's got a totally uncredited version of uh, Rat Salad. That's right, that's right. I forget that. Um, Very cool. And, and not yeah. maybe the most polished live album yeah. in the world, but you know what? That was Sabbath at the time. Yeah, I was I was going to say that. To me, um, you know, Live at Last was always one of these sort of like, an, almost like an official bootleg album. Um, but yeah, you're right. It was definitely not super polished. It has that um, live bootleg sound. Um, you know, I always took it to be that it was... You know, because it wasn't a completely authorized live album, uh, the sound quality is not um, what it should be. Certainly not compared to the Zeppelin. It's a little shrilly, and but, it, but it's okay. But it's okay, man. Yeah. I mean, when I put it on, even last night when I was listening to it again, which I hadn't heard disc one in a while, like I instantly 
I felt myself smile. Like, as soon as they kicked into Tomorrow's Dream, I mean, I'm such a huge Sabbath fan, but I could feel myself smiling while listening to yeah, it. And it I, I feel the same, because I actually listened to this in full yesterday. Because um, I, I haven't heard, I hadn't heard it in a while, and I was like, and and it's got it's warts and all. Because oh yeah, there's a couple bum notes here, like oh, during, yeah. during the Snowblind solo. You know, Iomi hits a wrong note there. Right. It's there, it's there all here. You know, but it's like, but I always remember that wrong note in totally. this version, right? And it's almost kind of like it belongs there. So I, I dig it. I think it's a really good live yeah. album. It's it, uh, you know, like I said, it's raw, it's rough. Warts and all, but that that's kind of the charm of the whole thing. Absolutely, you know. I mean, so, I, um, I, I love it. I mean, the only um, other than the 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 sound quality wise, yeah. my only and and I know I'm I'm you know I'm not a real musician like Pete, but um, I I do not like the whole seventies jam thing. <laughs> We've talked about this before. The, um, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not one that's I'm not the guy that says Wicked World's like almost twenty minutes, and, long. and that's where I'm going, Pete. <laughs> Even as a kid, like I, Wicked World was always a skip. Last night, I'm li- I listened to it for a few minutes, but I, you know, as soon as Iomi kicks into the whole jazz and improvisation lengthy. part, oh, yeah. I'm hitting skip. <laughs> you know, it's 18 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, you know, the original version is and a lot of people dig that, and it's, yeah, and I, which is fine. There, and I, you know, I like a lot of that jam and stuff. You know, right. for me, I don't mind the lengthy jams within the confines of an actual song. What I don't like is when it's just lengthy jams that aren't a part of anything. Uh, like I, I made a comment on a uh, ten years after uh, the, the recorded live live album, how Alvin Lee just like like there's like four tracks of just like aimless jams that aren't part of an actual song. Gotcha. That to me is a little excessive. See, I don't. I but I will tell you, Wicked World is a little lengthy. Yeah. Know. But it's but it's I only so it's like you know. right. I mean, and you know, Sabbath is my all time favorite band. It's the band that got me into music. But for me, you know, I gave it, uh, you know, again, the few minutes, and I'm like, all right, I, you know, if I'm going to listen to eight, 18 minutes and 55 seconds of, of Black Sabbath, that's uh, all of side one and probably half of side two of Black Sabbath one. The first album, yeah. So I could, I could just <laughs> listen to that. So um, that's my one uh, criticism. But I, I, it's such a great package having these live versions of songs that uh, were tracks, rarely yeah. performed live. Yeah. Um, I mean, tomorrow's dream, sweet leaf, killing yourself to live. Yeah. I mean, you know, megalomania, uh, hole in the sky. You know, it's great. The Ozzy does his intro. He's like, "Yeah, you haven't heard this yet. You know, this is off our our upcoming record, Sabotage." And I'm like, "Oh, this is so cool to <laughs> to hear this stuff." Yeah. So it's a good album. I, yeah, I, 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 I really did. enjoy it. Like I said, I was I was beaming while listening to it again. And I, I was very happy that they kind of released this later on and kind of accepted it as a, absolutely actually, you know, the band. I mean, this had the the, the full on thumbs up from the band. Let's go for it. Yes. Doing this, whereas you know all those twenty years before, Correct. this was looked at as a piece of garbage, right? But um, and I, I was just saying to Pete, you know, I remember Sabbath promoting this record during one of their Ozfest. Uh, tours so uh it was 2002 i guess uh pete was saying this came out so which makes sense because they did uh sabbath if i'm not mistaken i think did they do Ozfest 2002 or was that ozzy uh, I'm, I'm either way yeah e- either way they they were still uh, uh ozzy and sabbath were still going back and forth so um but yeah it's 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 a it's a fun record i i, I enjoy it and uh but it's got some some heavy competition with the uh, with Zeppelin, how the West was won. Yeah, I mean, so this was released right around the same time. So what this was a uh, 2003, I think, a year later. Yeah, 2003. So this is uh, this entire show recorded at the uh, L.A. Forum, Long Beach. Arena, right. Okay. Uh, in 1972, over the course of uh, two nights, and you know, you can say what you want about the song remains the same, and I love the song remains the same. Yep, same here. But for my money. This is the best Led Zeppelin live album, without question. Uh, and the fact that they kind of held this right for all those years—I mean, seriously. Well, I'm sh- I, listen. I'm sure they're sitting on a ton of stuff, just like Sabbath oh, yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, this is just—I uh, mean, this is like prime Zeppelin. This is like for me, Zeppelin were at their best right around that time. So from like seventy, I mean, you could arguably say the late sixties they were great too. But I think they were really peaking as a band. That, 71, like 70, 72, yeah. 71 through seventy four, right? That right around that that time. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say so maybe seventy one, like seventy five, like right in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think after seventy five, the kind of the wheels were starting to fall. Right. You know, Jimmy Page is all of a sudden, you know, in the throes of his addictions and everything, and Plants got all sorts of other shit going on in his life and what have you. 
But, um, I mean, this has got killer versions of so many great tunes. Uh, the Immigrant Song, Since I've Been Loving You is killer on here. Stay Away to Heaven is actually even really good on oh, here. Yeah. You know, it, not that we ever need to hear it again, but uh, what else? Days to Confuse, 25 Minutes Long. You know Chris skips through yeah, that one, say, right? Yeah, I Yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, the sound quality is awesome. It's really good. It on sounds this. amazing. Yeah. You know, Zeppelin is the one band that uh, I could say, I, unfortunately, you know, I saw Robert Plant and Jimmy Page together a bunch of times, but never saw Zeppelin. You know, in my head, I was playing it, and like I could picture them because it just sounded so good and so crisp. I could yeah. picture them playing live, and that's you know, of, of course, we'll we'll never get that uh, yeah, again. Yeah. But um, I think what's also so great about this is it kind of combines a lot of the 70s excess like we've just been talking about. So, you know, you got a whole lot of love is 23 minutes long on here. Right. So there's a lot of jamming on here, but there's a lot of just great killer renditions of some of their classic tunes. Uh, Bring It On Home here is killer. It's absolutely I mean, killer. The ocean is great on here. Absolutely. You know, right from the, from the get-go... Um, you know, the, the term that was always used to, to describe uh, Zeppelin, which I think was also the name of one of their famous fanzines, was tight but loose. Yeah. You know, playing, playing the songs, but, you know, having enough, giving them room to breathe with enough um, improvisation. And it was like, you know, on, on some of these tracks like Immigrant Song and Heartbreaker, and to me, those songs were just enough. Like, I was just starting to get lost in Heartbreaker, and then, bam, pull they, right they pull, pull right back in, and everybody was on point. Yeah. I was like, wow, you know, this was this was great. Where, unfortunately, they Zeppelin loses me on this record is, right, the 25-minute Moby Dick, <laughs> the 20-minute Dazed and Confused, and the 23-minute whole, whole Lot of Love. I just, I don't Loads have... An overload for you, right? Overload for me, and I, honestly, I, I, I skip all three. Oh, that's, that's, hey. But that's, you know, that's my thing. It's all, yeah. it's all what you like. Yeah, true. A lot of long stuff on here. Um, but a lot of like cool tight stuff, like Over the Hills and Far Away is great on here. Right. Uh, you know, you got yeah. Going to California, which I'm not a big fan of Going to California, but it kind of like breaks the rest of, you know, you got that and you got That's the Way and, it, you know, it kind of yeah. breaks the kind of mayhem of the rest of the concert. But, um, you know, you got a nice uh, What Is and What Should Never Be. I don't know. I just, I dig this No doubt. A lot. I mean, if, if I'm going to listen to Zeppelin Live, <laughs> that's, that's the, the one. one. Yeah. That's definitely and I, the one. And I dig Sore Man's the same a lot. Yeah, I, but I this is this is the better live album in my opinion, uh, but they're both really good. So um, yeah, so we get to that point in the video where we kind of have to take a look at both of these, and each one of us is going to pick which one we would prefer. You know, because again, there's no right or wrong nope, here. It's all based on it's what, all, you it's all like. what you like. And let me tell you, they're both really great. And yeah. I, even as you know. 15 minutes before you got here, I'm sitting there doing the Q&A Q Q live show, and I'm thinking, God, which of these albums am I going to pick, right? Because even sitting here right now, I'm like, I think I know the way I'm leaning. Um, and it may surprise some of you, but uh, I don't know. So I'm going to let my guest pick first. Okay. So, uh, awesome, thanks. I think Pete. I know which way you're going to go here. Well, you know, I mean, I was going to do the Sabbath, but then I was listening to the Zeppelin, and man, it just sounds so good. But then when we get to the 23-minute Whole Lot of Love and the 20-minute Moby Dick, I'm skipping them. So I, I ultimately said, okay, the two, two live records, how many songs do I skip on past lives? Right. And it's one, one, Wicked World. And I'm like, okay, I have three skips on the Zeppelin. So for me... But you got three sides here. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Jeez, now I didn't, I didn't think of that. I threw you a curveball. You so. did, you did. But overall... overall it's yeah, you know, if I'm going to listen to to uh, one over the other for me, myself, especially being a huge Black Sabbath fan, I love Zeppelin though, but I'm I'm going to pick Black Sabbath. Okay. Um, as you all know, I'm a bigger Sabbath fan than I am of Zeppelin. Although I love Zeppelin, right? I, I do. They're you know top band for me. Uh, these are a mega top band, uh, and I love this. I'm gonna I'm gonna nice. give this win by a slight, by half a hair by half a hair. To Zeppelin here, just because I think that this is, it's that good. And uh, not that this great. isn't. Absolutely. And, and again, this, I think this has probably, arguably, for the Sabbath lover in me, this has the better track list. And you're right, a little more concise, less jamming. But I just think that this is like kind of Zeppelin at the height of their powers. And it's, yeah. it's even with all the extra long songs, all that kind of stuff, it's still fucking good. And it's a, just an amazing yeah. sounding live record. Yeah, it, I is, mean, it's, it really is. So uh, so I'm going to give it to Zeppelin on this one. 
Chris is going to go with past lives with Black Sabbath. But it's close. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, if I'm taking the Sabbath by a half hair over yeah. Over, yeah. over the Zeppelin. And it's, yeah, if you ask me a couple weeks from now and I'd listen to this a couple more times, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go with... But, you know, I, today I'm going to pick Zeppelin because I just think that it's it's just a little bit better of a live album, in my opinion. But they're both great. So you guys can vote as well. In the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see a little white circle with a letter I in it. Click there. You can vote for... Zeppelin, How the West Was Won, or Black Sabbath Past Lives. Also go on our Facebook page. You can vote there. You know the deal. In six days, I'm going to cut off the, the, the voting, and I'm going to take the totals, and the winner of this of these two will go on to round two of our tournament, which is going to start in about roughly two weeks. So um, that's how it goes. So put your comments in below. We'd like to hear what you guys think about these two mega, mega live releases from two... Pretty, two pretty yeah. mega bands. Uh, yeah, yeah, they. I think they've gone places. Those I, two I bands. I think so. I think so. And uh, this is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube every damn day. Don't touch that dial because this guy's not going anywhere. We got a few more really cool, heavy, classic live album wars coming up that we'll be playing throughout the weekend. So, Chris. You stay where you are. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and you guys can. Uh, I, I write the monthly heavy metal column. That's more right. metal. Uh, for more Sugar Magazine, which you can pick up uh, newsstands and clubs if you're in the Hudson Valley, New York area. Uh, if not, you can read it, the whole magazine online at www.moresugar.com. I uh, interview bands and take concert pictures and talk about all he's things all over the place, yeah. metal. That's right. And he's been on this show quite a lot, so if you've missed any of Chris's uh, previous appearances, he's uh, we've done a massive three-part History of Black Sabbath right. series. We've done a massive three-part History of Judas Priest series. We've got an Iron Maiden series, History of Coming Up, and he's done a whole host of top ten shows and classic live album wars with me, so he's not hard to find. So it's always show. a pleasure. Yeah, so one of these days we're going to get you on the questions and answers show. Oh, okay, cool. We'll do a live stream on that because people would love to, I think, pick your brain too. That sounds great. Awesome. So, awesome. All right, guys, so we'll see you real soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.